Okay. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, this is Mert. Uh, I will be talking about on the, our research on Jot Malware Adventures today. Uh, our talk will be in three parts. First, we will introduce uh, our work and ourselves. And after that, uh, I will give some introductory knowledge about the Google Play Store and its uh, protection mechanisms and the developments in Android that got us a uh, uh, hardened environment for now. And after that, we will uh, talk about Android malware uh, in the wild, mostly uh, banking as a service types. And after that, we will see why they are using C2s and how can we hack them uh, by looking at the, some examples that we have experienced. So as I said, I'm Mert and my uh, co-researcher is Kurshat. We are both uh, security engineers at uh, e-commerce company Trentiol and uh, in our free time, we're uh, just uh, contributing to community through uh, HitKit and Black Black security in forms of cybersecurity and red team topics. Uh, what we we'll basically do for this research is uh, we're hunting mobile malware samples and reverse them. And after reversing, uh, we we'll mostly come, come up with a, some anti-technique to be bypassed or some neural techniques. Uh, to be used in order to uh, analyze the malware. And after that, we, after we reverse, we has to extract the ICs. And if we see or uh, if we detect some uh, storage or C2, we try to hack it to, in order to purge the stolen data from the threat actor. So this is why uh, our work is called Malware Adventures, because under it, malware scene is growing every day. And uh, it, it becomes an adventure for us. Uh, every day we are coming up with new samples and we are uh, always uh, come up with new techniques. Uh, so in Google Play Store, uh, uh, even nowadays there's a malware threat. And uh, in Google, Google uh, introduced Bouncer for it as an anti-malware tool in February uh, 2012. And uh, after that, uh, the malware threat decreases a little bit, but after uh, you reverse or investigate Bouncer, uh, the researchers and the threat actors see that you cannot easily bypass it uh, because when you analyze the Bouncer itself, uh, it's a sandbox and it only performs dynamic analysis and it checks the APK itself for five minutes only. So after five minutes, it decides whether it's uh, malicious or not, and it allows it to allows it for you to upload the APK to the Google Play Store. So in deep time, uh, you can also detect that uh, Bouncer has only one contact in the smartphone and two photos under the same account, and it uses a simulated device. So you can also, since it's a simulated device, and uh, as far as I detected uh, they use some kind of uh, server farm. You can also detect the IP range of the bouncer. So you can use these all, all information to uh, bypass bouncer easily. Here's the, some examples. Uh, I mean, you can idle your main activity for five minutes. So a bouncer cannot detect your activities. So it can, it can decide that you're uh, not doing any malicious activity. Uh, what you can do is you can also uh, <clears throat> download your malicious functions in DEX format after the installation, and you can use DEX class loader function to load these functions into your APK afterwards. So it's it's a uh, the novel technique that Anubis uh, was used back then. You can also use it to bypass parser. And lastly, since it's an emulator, you, you can. Uh, implement various anti-emulator techniques. Uh, I just list known ones uh, in them. So you can detect uh, it's, uh, your APK runs on the emul emulated system and you can decide not to run your activities uh, in the emulate simulated or emulated device. So you can easily bypass sponsors via this technique as well. So in Android, uh, throughout the years, uh, Android hardened itself against the malware or some kind of phishing or malicious activities. Uh, the last developments in Android scene is uh, Adiantum uh, for storage. And they hardened the process isolation, which uh, your process 
cannot reach the other ones in memory or disk. So it reduces the attack surface. And also Android uh, itself introduced a biometric API uh, that was uh, custom implemented from uh, various Android manufacturers before, but now Android itself natively supports biometric API, which you can use to detect face or fingerprint. And Google policies are also changed throughout the years. The latest and the most important one is the removing apps from the Google Play Store, which asks for a SMS or call login permission. Uh, yeah, these are used for good pur purposes, but mostly threat actors use them to uh, detect your SMS file, to uh, steal your 3D information uh, from uh, your SMSs, or try to send SMS to a uh, priced uh, SMS services so that you, they can steal uh, money from you. Uh, uh, the, for the one of the first important changes in Play Store is this. And the second one is the device admin. Uh, device admin uh, basically lets you control all the device features and the device itself. So they are changing and remove some of the maliciously used functions uh, in Android 10. And in Android 10 and beyond in the roadmap, Android has uh, clipboard monitoring disabled. So you cannot steal the clipboard or change it. And more restrictive storage permissions nowadays uh, the, and the back then SD card permission is danger was dangerous because of the some of the malicious actors use them to steal SD cards uh, in, in files. Which mostly use, which mostly used by the cloud storage APKs. So the, this could be uh, stored uh, your personal information. So the, the, these also restricted these kind of things, and screen recording restrictions as well. Uh, once you try to screen record, uh, the Android uh, warns the users that some of the applications record your screen. So it also prevents spyware activities. And also Google introduced an app defense alliance so that they can fight uh, malware in Google Play Store and also emerging ones. They are basically uh, private companies who specialized in Android malware and mobile malware in general. And they are using this uh, alliance to detect malicious activities in the Google Play Store and harden the Google Play Store itself uh, by consulting them. So looking at the malware as a services, uh, we first, as an adventure, we first start to analyze Exobot variants. And after that, even if we analyze other uh, kind of malware, we see that the mostly in the wild, you come across malware as a service types. And these being, uh, evol these, uh, the, you can see the evolution of them. Uh, there was first uh, Exabot, which, uh, which was a wrong learning operation. And after that, Red Alert came uh, in competitive to Exabot. And after that, Red Alert evolved into the Anubis. And there is a competitor to Anubis, which called Hydra, but uh, we can now see that Cerberus is uh, the descendant, descendant of the Anubis nowadays as a service. Uh, the, the ones where, where, when we were analyzing Exobot, uh, they were uh, in Turkey used as uh, Turkish founding father Mustafa Kemal Atatürk's name. Uh, there was a there was APKs uh, in Google Play Store called uh, Pictures of uh, Atatürk. And if you download the APK, the, that was the screen that you come up. Uh, the app was not working and uh, in the behind, it was try to install uh, the malicious application uh, on top of the uh, non-malicious one. And while, before doing that, it, it was uh, try to detect whether it's emulated device or the actual device by looking at the device ID or country or uh, your SIM card information and also checked if the device is rooted or not to see if it can uh, execute some commands. If it can execute command like that and find this SU binary, which is the root binary, 
uh, it stops and does not drop the malicious, the malicious APK so that the analyzer uh, cannot analyze it. So once you analyze the uh, malicious APK file, which used for bank pod purposes, you can, uh, from the strings, you can see it try to detect your uh, MasterCard informations and your uh, various banking information along with the uh, operating system itself. And uh, you can bypass the anti emulator by using Frida, and you can just randomly assign yourself a device ID so that it can uh, find some device ID in the emulated device. Also, you can bypass suit detection to if you see SU binary code, you can just replace it with, with some fake command so that it returns null and the, device, the APK does not detect some root activity in the device. Uh, the other is the red alert. Uh, red alert was unique in that uh, they were fetching their updated C2 through Twitter, which uh, helps threat actor to not uh, redistribute its APK because you can always tweet your latest C2 and the all of your uh, APKs uh, from the devices can fetch it once they are online again. Uh, it also asks a device admin permission, which I've said, uh, it completely hands over your pawns uh, features and administration to the APK that you give device admin permission. And also it checks the running application using PA's command so that it, if it can detect some banking inform if banking application, it can use overlay attack and uh, steal your banking information. And the uh, the most update one of the most updated and dangerous uh, variant is Anubis. Uh, these are the malware as a service panel. You can see all of the functionality in there, and you can just uh, define you what your uh, need is, and it can uh, it can it can give you an APK to distribute in Google Play Store or whenever you want, and it can give you a uh, pre-implemented uh, panel so that you can uh, you can manage your bots like this as you can see uh, the, this is the uh, this is the good example of a malware as a service and malware panel uh, you could hunt Anubis on the Google Play Store mostly by looking at these flashlight applications or some tech applications like games etc these are not uh, at all not working at all. If I want to download them, it uh, use some kind of other activities in the behind. So uh, once you download it, and you you must probably delete them and forget about them afterwards. In Turkey, we you can see mostly retail apps or banking, uh, phishing banking uh, apps uh, from uh, Anubis uh, throughout through Twitter campaigns or uh, some government applications fake advertisements like this. Uh, once you analyze it, uh, the dropper itself, uh, it uses a non-malicious APK to uh, download itself into the Google Play Store. And uh, after that, it uses some kind of C2 to download it uh, malicious activity file files, text files. And uh, the dropper itself also has some kind of uh, not that advanced obfuscated strings. Uh, it is, and after that, if you analyze the DEX file, which got downloaded or some APK, which got downloaded by the dropper, you can see it is all encrypted. Uh, it decrypts itself into memory. And after that, it writes so it, the, the all the classes into a jar file in some temporary file or random file uh, in the operating system. It depends on the Anubis version. And after that, it uh, used dex.cluster to load this jar file into itself. So you cannot, uh, and after that, it deletes the jar file. So if, if you analyze the functions, uh, you all you see is these encrypted uh, strings. Uh, you have to fetch the jar file before it got deleted by Anubis, which is happens in one or two seconds. So you have to bypass 
the mechanisms somehow, or you can uh, fetch the memory itself, or you know, to analyze it. And if you decrypt the functions, you can see these are all banking, Turkish banking numbers. Uh, it's uh, it uses call forwarding. So if if your banks try to call you, if uh, in order to uh, reach you for fraud uh, or some other cases, uh, they cannot because it uh, forwards the calls. And it also detects these uh, banks so that if you're running them, uh, it can use overlay attack. Uh, it's basically uh, they use some kind of HTML to mimic the bank's login screen and it overlays them the actual application. So when you when you are, uh, write your uh, login information to the bank, you're, uh, you're also uh, feeding them to the analysis itself. And if you try to uh, delete the malicious APK or the malicious uh, activity files, uh, it's the, uh, the resume module activates and it uh, encrypts your device and it goes to, into the, this warning, which uh, demands you a Bitcoin, some kind of amount, time to time. So by using FIDA, you can uh, try to not to delete Anubis or trick Anubis to actually believe it deletes the jar file like this uh, by implementing the file functions delete implementation so that you can fetch jar file afterwards. Also, now some new variants using the native implementation which uses unlink function. So you can also, uh, you, by using FIDA, you can also change the unlink implementation just not to do anything uh, so that you can uh, try to mimic a delete function and on this uh, does not delete the function uh, jar file itself, but you can fetch it afterwards. And the Anubis competitor is uh, Hydra nowadays, and it also using tech government applications mostly. You can see the panel itself here. It also is some uh, nice UX UI panel. And it uh, does the same as functionality as Anubis, but it also has some advanced features. Uh, you can use uh, on the Hydra's campaign feature, which you can see, uh, which you can set beginning and the end of the campaign, uh, which uh, defines your, uh, how long your APK will active, will be active. You can see the time functions in there. Uh, the Hydra uh, variants only works some duration of the time so that it cannot be analyzed or it can be deactivated uh, once it got detected. And these uh, anti-techniques both resides in Java plane and the, the native plane. And also you can see the native function is also obfuscated. So it's really hard to analyze at first, but uh, you can see, uh, you can re-implement the date function. So you can make Hydra work because you can set the date yourself. And uh, also Hydra uh, variants can have some counter restrictions if you want to analyze some kind of uh, variant work in the uh, some kind of country, you can implement the country ISO function. Uh, in that case, we, are, we were using Turkey, uh, but you can use the other countries. And these are the uh, native implementation variants for time. And uh, the Hydra also uses the encryption which also decrypts itself into the memory and after it loads itself into some jar file. So you can use again on link implementation to fetch the jar file to see the functions itself. Uh, the last thing is the Cerberus malware variant. Uh, it's, also, it's also a malware as a service and you can see Cerberus is highly active on Twitter. It, re it regularly the actors regularly updates the application, both in end techniques and the new bank uh, informations and bank variants and overlay attacks. So you can see the servers itself is on uh, on Twitter as well, and it mocks the threat actors most of the time by re researching researching their application. And uh, the servers is likely the same and uh, as Anubis and Hydra. It 
uh, use both of their functionality, but on top of that, it uses some uh, sensor data to detect whether it works on emulator or not, because in Android phones, uh, whether you do something or not, you have uh, sensors on, on your phone, which collects data all the time. And uh, the APKs on your uh, Android uh, can fetch these sensor data without some getting some permission uh, if it's not include your personal information. So uh, you can leverage this sensor data to uh, detect whether uh, your application runs on the emulated device or not. So Cerberus is uh, really intelligent by using that. Uh, why they are using C2s? All of the banking malwares has a C2 panel to manage the bots and some custom panels. Uh, you can see threat actors use because of they need to some place to store stolen information or distribute a new sample through their C2s and also first manage the infected host to uh, extend their botnet or uh, steal some more information. So you can use these kind of these GitHub repositories to uh, use in your researches to uh, automatically uh, extract C2 information or uh, unpack the some of the known variants. Uh, by using them, you can uh, fastly detect the C2 or the variant and the behavior of the Android malware itself so that you can patch the C2 information before it got shut down because they're changing so fast in a day or two, maybe a week if you're lucky. So it's important to fetch the C2 information as fast as possible. So it's uh, there's an automated base uh, which you can use. Uh, let's uh, look at the, uh, exploiting some known C2s. Uh, we will uh, we mostly exploit some known and uh, custom panels which threat actors use to distribute red alerts, Exabot, Anubis, and even Hydra itself, and Cerberus, uh, of course. The first, uh, the red alert, red alert panels has director listing uh, vulnerability, which you can see the stolen data. Uh, as you can see, the, there is numbers from the phone book from some uh, infected device and the installed applications. Uh, if uh, also Red Alert has also uh, some ransomware functionality if you try to activate it. And if it, the cryptor is activated, it writes the encrypted key in the uh, your uh, log, uh, which you can fetch from director listing vulnerability. And uh, as you can see, you can de decrypt it by using this key, uh, which, which you can save your device. Uh, another custom panel which uses to distribute red alert and exobot, uh, this threat actor use custom panel, but it uh, uses uh, source code in its, uh, uh, in, uses password in its source code. And by this password, you can log in the panel. And in this panel, there, there are some functionalities. As you can see, screenshot that can capture a password to see the passwords. Uh, in one of the panel has file upload functionality, which we did uh, use to uh, upload web shell with, uh, after that we, uh, we purge all the information and uh, as you can see, we uh, shut down the operation itself. And you can see some of, uh, some of the custom uh, panel has uh, a SQL injection vulnerability. By using it, we uh, got into the dashboard, which we can see it got uh, it infects the Tallinn clients mostly, and the you can uh, moderate clients by using the dashboard. And uh, after that, uh, after we got into the that, we also by using module uh, functions we upload. Uh, then again, we upload some web shell and purge the uh, all of the data and shut down the operation as well. Again. And as I said, Anubis, Hydra, and Cerberus variants uh, like to use Twitter campaigns to distribute malware and to steal bank bot information. After it steal bank bot information, it uh, would like you to uh, install some APK file, or it can directly ask you to some uh, APK install APK file through Ruffle campaigns. It say that. We are giving free Mercedes to 50 people. Please do not accept application and 
give us your information so that you can join the ruffle, uh, this kind of uh, Twitter campaigns. But we detect that uh, mostly all of the panel input screens have stored access vulnerability. And by, this, by using this stored access vulnerability, we sent the sniffers to Twitter campaigns. Uh, we use some automation so we can detect these campaigns and send stored access uh, payload to them and get in through uh, to the panel because uh, once the panel uh, admin see see the information our stored xss payload runs and it we we get the cookie information which we can use to log in the panel itself as you can see the one of the actors uses junior escobar nickname and you can see all of the users and their passwords and their sms's which mostly yes that's that's a test uh, they use mock up one but the other as you can see uh, give their 3D information. And also you can see there's a credit card numbers and their uh, CVC and social security numbers, their birthdays, their card limits and 3D passwords. If they can, uh, they want to use, uh, as I said, from the APK, they can use overlay attack so they can fetch the 3D information as well. These kind of panels, uh, you can see every day on Twitter campaigns and also some other, as you can see, Serbian panel. It has uh, Turkish, uh, again, the Turkish information, the uh, social security number, their passwords. It's from some kind of government application. Uh, they are mimicking government application and they are fetching the government information from the, uh, from the users. So uh, as a takeaway, uh, we uncover we uncovered the operations, uh, malware as a service operations and Twitter campaign operations through reversing the common malware as a service families. Uh, and we, we are feeling that we hack back those threat actors for those who can't uh, defend themselves on the cyber area. And we purge the stolen data from the malware as a service families uh, users, the threat actors themselves so that we prevent further incidents as in the uh, call uh, fraud or credit card fraud, these kind of things. And with our research throughout these two years, we uh, make 13 threat actors got arrested from Turkish cybercrime. So we can say that uh, we detect not only the C2s, but the actors itself uh, physically by using their uh, C2 data that we hack into. Uh, we monitor them for a while so that we can detect their uh, true origin so that we can uh, report them to a Turkish cyber crime. So these are the main takeaways uh, from our research. And if you have any question uh, about our research and the specifics of it, I'm happy to answer. Thanks, Mud. Uh, we have plenty of time for the QA. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, drop it in the chat. But there is one question in the chat. Um, so given all Google App Store bounce to bypass techniques, what can we do to prevent power from the car and red devices? So firstly, uh, if you if uh, if you have if you need something from the Google Play Store, and if you're not sure about the source, I mean, if it's not a known application like Facebook, Instagram, etc., even if it is, uh, as you can see, it mimics the government or retail application. Uh, you can try to look at the ratings and the comments on the application and the developer of it. Mostly the developer information is verified from Google Play itself. It, if it's a trustable source, uh, it's, uh, you can see the, the design that it's approved by the Google Play Protect. And uh, you can also see the, uh, the which, who, who is the uploader, uh, who is the developer of the application. And 
you can see the, the developer's other application so that you can make sure that it's not a mock-up or some kind of malicious application. But the mostly the ratings and the comments gives the malicious application uh, up because the, in the comments mostly uh, you can see uh, high ratings uh, given by bots or some kind of rate, uh, comments that the, these application does not do anything, don't download it, etc. This kind of warnings. It's uh, it always good to check these uh, ratings and comments before downloading the application itself. But uh, if once you got infected by some kind of malware, well, depending on the uh, variant, uh, as we mentioned, uh, it could be a, a some it could have some ransomware functionality. And once you try to uh, uh, delete the application itself, it got activated. Uh, it's always good to check uh, the malicious application from uh, uh, installed application from system settings because it mostly hides itself from uh, the main dashboards. But once uh, you detect that you got infected by some application and then it hides itself into the uh, application folder and you cannot, you cannot see on the dashboard physically uh, on the, some, not uh, on the activities, uh, you can use ADB, you can, what you can do is you can uh, use USB to connect your phone to the computer and uh, use ADB or you can use it over Wi-Fi use uh, Android the ADB functionality to uninstall the application through command line so that it cannot activate itself once uh, you uh, trigger it through UI uh, so that you can get rid of most of the uh, Android, Android malware like this because uh, they cannot reach the kernel because of the hardware abstraction layer. Uh, you cannot see some kind of rootkit functionality like you see in Windows. So in that regard, Android is pretty hardened, if you can say so. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, if you have more questions, uh, I'm happy to answer them. We have nearly two minutes time left. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, just keep dropping them in the chat. There's one more question to you, Mark. Does mobile antivirus software actually help in preventing malware on mobile devices? Um, signals are mixed in this area. Uh, well, uh, most of the <clears throat> antiviruses that uh, is for mobile, uh, I reverse most of them. And uh, what they can do is you can see them once you're uploading some APK, they get the hash and uh, through that hash, it uh, fetches the information from a cloud. Uh, it does not have an internal database. It fetches information from some uh, kind of other services to see whether it's uh, uh, good or not. But uh, the, since Android has some kind of restrictions to it, uh, you, the un antivirus software cannot detect the behavior-based uh, signatures or cannot detect malicious behaviors uh, because they, it needs the hooking and uh, which uh, you, you need some kind of system permission and you cannot get the system permission if you're not the manufacturer of the, uh, uh, of the phone. And maybe you can do it, but uh, I didn't see any variant, uh, antivirus variant doing that. So what they actually do is pro it protects you from known variants, known, or known hashes. But uh, as I can see, uh, as far as I see, malware as a service panels can get you a unique samples, uh, you can call it, because they can change the inverse of the application and how they work. So every time you generate a new malware, you can get a unique sample, but uh, they are really, uh, the mal antivirus comp companies are uh, fast to detect them and they add their uh, signature database, but 
uh, you're not 100% uh, protected by using these antivirus software. Yeah, look up. If there is any more questions, we'll just uh, hang here for another couple of minutes. That's pretty much it from uh, Zoom questions. We have opened the Discord channel um, for this talk. Um, so if you have any further questions, uh, feel free to just drop in the Discord channel for Mert. Uh, we'll answer the questions there. I will share the slides as well in this Discord channel so you can look, a further look at it. And if you have questions regarding the slides, uh, you could uh, ask me on Discord. All right. 